Hey, my name is Curran and I'm not a developer, but I've created six different SaaS products, probably like 12 over my lifetime. And I wanna explain how I did it. Now for most of these products, like I really didn't put that much money in. I didn't have any funding or anything. So I'm gonna show you how to do this basically with, uh, with no money. Now, if you're not a developer, it really doesn't cost that much money. I mean, I'll show you how to do it with a limited budget. And honestly, with the rise of AI, like you might not even need a developer to begin with, depending on your skills. So let's get into it. All right, very first step is let's think about distribution first. This is probably the biggest mistake that I've made and probably a lot of people make when they're thinking of SaaS ideas. You gotta think about how you're gonna get this into the hands of, of people who actually want it. What that actually involves is one, like the channel that you're going to like reach people in. So that could be ads, SEO, a product hunt launch, AppSumo. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different channels where you could get people to sign up for your product and pay for it. So you gotta think through the channel and then also like, how are you gonna sell this? Because there's a lot of different SaaS products out there today. So you need a little bit of a tweak in your differentiation to say, here's why you should buy this compared to like do, using something else or like using something that's free or something like that. So you gotta think through both of those things, how you're gonna get it into people's hands and then also like how you're gonna sell it in terms of differentiation and what's your little twist on whatever your idea is. Another really underrated distribution channel is Facebook groups. You would never really think about this, but this is how we got all of our customers for uh, one of our first products, CallScaler. All of our initial customers just came from like us chatting in a Facebook group and trying to get people to switch from their current provider to us. And it worked really, really well. It was actually pretty easy because we had a lower price product and it was significantly lower price. So people changed over fairly quickly. And usually like people in Facebook groups, they're the most engaged if they're actively in a Facebook group and chatting and commenting, they're thinking about whatever like, you know, niche you're in, they're thinking about it a lot. So um, just something to think about. It's a great way to like find customers and you don't, don't be too salesy with it. You know, like just message people and be like, Hey, I don't even remember how we did this, but uh, we would just subtly promote the product if people were asking. Second thing that we want to look at is like the idea itself. Is this possible? And like, is this a good idea? Now, this is something that is typically kind of hard to give advice on, but I have some interesting notes that I can give you. So one, is there an API that you can find and you can put like an interface on top of it? And if you don't know what an API is, the easiest way to explain it is like someone else's code base, you can leverage it with an API. Uh, so for example, with our main product, Call Scaler, it's a way to buy phone numbers and forward calls. And there's a lot of other stuff with it, but that's the main use case. So basically when we're buying a phone number or when we're forwarding a call, both of those are processed by a third party API that actually handles everything in terms of buying phone numbers and forwarding calls. So it's like, we're not writing all of the code to like, you know, talk to different network carriers and like actually forward the stuff. We just basically send one little snippet of code to this API provider and then they actually do the forwarding and everything for us. So it makes your product a lot simpler to create and actually makes it a lot cheaper to create because you can create it like way quicker. It doesn't require as good of a developer. That's one tip is just, is there an API that I can find that I could just put like a UI on top of. And one, one way you could look at this is go to rapidapi.com. They have a ton of like APIs. I would make sure that it's like, you know, a reputable one first, but uh, you can find like different ideas. I'd be like, okay, can I put like an interface on top of this API and let people use this API without having like no code or anything? So that's one way to come up with ideas. Um, the second thing is again, the differentiation part. Is there something you're paying for right now that you're like kind of annoyed by? Uh, this has certainly been our process with a lot of the products that we've built. It's like, okay, this one product, like I like it, but there's like a couple of things that I just don't like about it. And I'd rather have my own one that I can sell these differentiated parts to. And you could differentiate in a lot of different ways. Like one of the nice things about launching on a marketplace like AppSumo, which is basically lifetime deals for software products, is you have inbuilt differentiation to start with because the pricing model on AppSumo is you pay once and you get access forever. So uh, that is the nice thing about AppSumo. You have kind of inbuilt dis differentiation, but you still probably want to create like some feature differentiation as well. So when you're coming up with an idea, look at what you use, maybe come up with, maybe look at uh, APIs that you could put an interface on top of. Um, 
yeah, come up with like a cool little idea and probably just try to do something super simple at first. Like with Call Scaler, all we did at first was find a way to buy phone numbers and forward them. Now it's a way more robust product, but at first that's all we did and we did it at a cheaper price than our competitors and we got a bunch of users that way. Okay, so you thought about your distribution, you thought about your idea, maybe you have an idea already. Now, how do you actually execute that and make it happen that on a budget or without a budget at all? So I'm gonna give you my way I do this. It's not the perfect way. There's a million different ways to do everything, but this is how I do it. Uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll create a mock-up before I do anything. And basically this mock-up will just be a simple like dashboard or something uh, that I'll create just like with a, a page builder on WordPress. And even if you don't know WordPress or you don't know how to design anything, you can go to dribble.com and they have a bunch of like dashboard UIs that you, you just like look up and uh, send these to your developer. There's also a lot of templates out there. So like I use Tailwind on one of our projects where you can go and find different templates and layouts so that you ha automatically have a pretty decent looking app to start with that already has like some of the mobile features built in and stuff like that. So using a template is super helpful in terms of like actually getting the design, but I like to just mock it up myself. And you don't even need a page builder for this. You could literally sketch it out and send photos to like your developer. But once you're sketching it out, it totally clarifies the idea for you in what you're actually building. So that's that's the best point of a mock-up to begin with is it clarifies your idea it shows the developer exactly what you're going for. And so that's really, really important in terms of saving time and in, in the development process and stuff like that. So that's step one. Step two is finding a developer or using AI to build it. Like if it's a super, super simple product, like we've done this with WordPress plugins and stuff, um, you can ask AI to build it for you. You're gonna end up doing a lot of testing and stuff and you might not know like what's happening, but we've certainly built products where it actually works uh, all with AI. Like I didn't even have to hire a developer. So it's possible, but it takes a lot more just general knowledge about software to begin with. And then also um, you can't do as complicated of products, like unless you know what you're doing in terms of development. It, it's a lot harder to do that only with AI, but maybe that'll change in the future. I, I'm like feeling pretty bullish on AI generated software. I think it's gonna be huge in the next like three, four years. Might even render SaaS useless. So who knows if this video is even worth it. Okay, let's just assume that you're going the developer route. You could probably do it. If it's a simple product, do it for like three grand, two grand. Uh, it really depends on the product. I mean, it totally depends. But if you're like calling a you, if you're calling an API and putting kind of like a user interface on top of that, I've definitely done that for like two thousand, three thousand dollars. Which it, I mean, look, if you think that's a lot, that is not a lot for development. I promise that. Um, but you can go on Upwork and find someone just do a fixed price project. Find someone overseas. I've had pretty good luck with like people from Pakistan for some reason. Like almost every time I hire out of Pakistan, it's like wow, this developer was really good for like 20 bucks an hour. So that's my general recommendation. Like if, especially if you're doing this on a budget, hire overseas and I recommend Pakistan if anything, but that maybe that's, maybe I just got lucky with Pakistani developers. I don't know, but I like doing a fixed price project to start with. That way, you know exactly what you're paying for and just be like, okay, look, I'm doing a bare bones MVP. Please make this like just work and we can clean it up later. That way it lets you like, Get the product out. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, like using these templates, you can still make it look pretty decent, but um, you could still do it on a budget. As for things to look out for, especially when hiring developers, I've hired a ton. One of the biggest things I think is look out for like entrepreneurial developers. I actually think hiring someone who is less entrepreneurial is much better. And what I mean by that is you're hiring someone who actually wants to be doing the contract work. Like I've made the mistake where I actually connect with the developer more because I'm like, oh, they're entrepreneurial too, too. They seem really cool. But then I realize, oh, they just want to start their own thing just like I do. I find that these types of people, they don't put their full effort into it and they're really just doing it for the paycheck. Whereas like some of the contract developers who actually just want, they just enjoy the process of like development and they're not as like entrepreneurial minded. The, yes, they're doing it for the paycheck as well, but I think they enjoy the craft more. Maybe this is also, again, my personal experience, but I've 
found that like the more entrepreneurial someone is, or even honestly, the more I connect with the person, it generally leads to a worse situation. So it's weird. I don't know. It's kind of backwards, but maybe that's also just my personality where it's like, I want to hire someone who's going to just like kind of do the work and be the developer on the project. Like I don't want a partner because I want to own all the equity. And that also is my preference. You could totally find someone to partner with. But for me, I just personally find it easier if I can control everything um, just because I am a little bit of a control freak. Other things to look out for is developers who can't clearly convey what they're saying. They, they talk in developer speak and you can't understand like anything. Like if, if they just keep telling you stuff and you're like, can you dumb this down? And then they still never dumb it down. They're it's likely that it's going to be really annoying to work with them. Anyways, take everything I say with a grain of salt because I'm not a master at this. Like I just do do some random stuff on the internet and I'm a guy talking to you on YouTube. So I'm probably gonna look back in this video and be like, the fuck, everything he said is, is dumb. So I don't know, yeah. Anyways, that's it.